the from the outside, it must look absolutely crazy, right? Esports, or competitive online multiplayer video games, have become big business. The owners of one of the dominant competitions turned over a billion dollars last year alone, and part of that is driven by spectators, not just players. What we're talking about is professional, competitive video gaming. Players who play 10 or 12 hours a day to become the best of the world. Over 50,000 people are going to come and watch them here this weekend at the Spodek Arena, and there's a predicted audience who are going to watch online of over 20 million people. First of all, explain how you can make a profession out of this. How do they actually get paid? So, OK, obviously there are different prize pots for different games, and they vary in size. So next weekend is the Call of Duty World Championships. The prize pot for that is $1 million, Ooh. so the top team will take away 400000 Maybe I could that's, get interested. That's more interesting, <laughs> yeah, you're interested, it? right? So there's, there's a, lot of, uh, a lot of money to be had. Uh, do you think video will... games are, are a sport? I was about to ask Yeah, that. I mean, yeah. you can, you know, I, you know where I stand. I, a lot of people know I stand where, uh, with the athletes as professional athletes, and I'll debate that with anybody. Describe the game for me, because I have never played it. Well, League of Legends is five people versus five people, two teams, each person has a base, and then whichever team destroys the base first wins. I think it's interesting. Definitely, like it's definitely going to be something that's getting more and more prevalent in the coming future, I guess. I think a lot more kids are spending time playing computer games as opposed to maybe 15 years ago or whatever when I was like eight years old, then we would have been outside playing, you know, playing football and whatever your mates us. I think a lot now, it's pretty social now as well, isn't it, gaming? Like you can just talk to your mates over your mic. So it's kind of, it's kind of a similar thing, but obviously quite different. And I think it's probably going to, yeah, only increase as time goes on. Yeah, would you say that they're actual athletes or would you...? No, personally I wouldn't at all. Obviously, you could, you can see similarities. They obviously spend a lot of time honing their skills, but personally I probably wouldn't see it. I wouldn't describe them as athletes. Very talented people, but not athletes, personally. Well, from my point of view, there is a certain element of training and conditioning and a certain mindset that goes along with professional gaming. Because I've, I've played a lot of these games myself and I'm nowhere near a professional. It's hard. It's genuinely challenging. That said, I wouldn't put them in the same category as athletes. The amount of training and like, just sheer willpower to become an athlete is a lot greater, in my humble opinion. Well, I do think it's a real thing that people should be allowed to do it and that it is, like, you need skill to do it. Well, I don't know why they call us an athlete, mate, but I, I guess if you can make a living out of it, it's fair enough. But I always thought sports were fundamentally some of the way you were... Uh, you ran and sweated, you at least sweated, right? I mean, to me, if you don't sweat, it ain't sport, is it? I think it's a waste of time. I don't understand why on earth you would want to stand around and watch other people play a game instead of playing said game yourself. Although I haven't said that, I haven't said that. Um, years ago, there was a woman called Lady Docker who was a bit of an eccentric aristocrat and she organized the World Marbles Championship, you know, called Sport. Actually, it was on, it used to be a program in the 50s and 60s called Sports View, and she was on there being interviewed. So it's always been a bit of an elastic, elasticated definition, but, uh, you know, I still say no sweat, no sport. My name's Stephen Dillon, I'm uh, 26. I study game design and production at uh, technically Plymouth Uni. I kind of grew up playing games, as most people who get into games do. Like, my brother played a lot, um, and being brothers, you get it's like a competitive nature, I suppose. So I first got into, I would say I first first got into like competitive gaming with Halo 2 uh, on the Xbox, the original Xbox. That's where I, I would play, like, after school, you know, finish at 3 o'clock, I think school used to finish, play until like 12 every day. So I played a lot of that and then they had clan matches so I developed like a close group of friends from school. We would play together. Um, back then, like esports wasn't, it was a thing but it wasn't as it is today. So I would spend like my time on YouTube watching like, um, they were called montages. You don't really get them as much anymore these days because we've got streaming and Twitch and s stuff like that. So like not as many people make montages but I used to spend a lot of time watching players like SK Auger and SK Baby Auger and kind of wanting to to be like them. So I was just playing, 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 playing. 
from those group of friends that got me involved like we kind of as we got older we progressed to different games so from there we went on to play for um to play cod modern the first modern warfare and um, that was the game where um i went technically professional i was the sponsor <coughs> sponsored and i was playing in tournaments across the uk so my team from halo we transitioned to cod as together as a team we played there and it was just kind of luck really you, you know play and play and play and then the better you you got the the more recognition you got in the forums and people would say you know have you seen this player etc cetera, etc cetera. Um, and then we we were approached by I don't think they're a team anymore but they were VVV Vinny Vincent something they were called they were quite a big team at the time for for esports um, they offered our team to to kind of merge with them and that kind of got me thinking like if a team as big as that want to recruit for people like that most people haven't heard of that's got to say something about us so we formed our own team Team V <laughs> it was called. Uh, I don't know why, just what we called it. So we went to a lot of local tournaments. Uh, we went to like national tournaments like Birmingham, London. Um, we went to one called Matchbox in Birmingham at the NEC. Um, had all the best teams in the UK there. At the time it was Reason, Logic, and a team called BSE, called a bit of something extra. Um, we technically finished fifth, but um, Logic and Reason, who were like the best pro teams at card at the time in the UK, had two teams each, um, so we managed to beat both of their second teams, but lost to the third. So that's where the placement happened. And then after that, we were approached by an agent, I guess, um, who wanted us to branch our team out into different categories. So we recruited a Gears of War team. We had a second COD team. We had a Halo team. So it was kind of like a little mini organization. We got to go and play on TV, a TV channel called X League TV, which was really cool. Got to, we went to London for the day, and it kind of just snowballed from there went from game to game to game until here I am <laughs> 26 kind of got to focus more on life now so I don't have as much time to put into it as I did which sucks but that's the thing with 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 trying to to go pro I guess I mean I'm not an athlete as you can tell <laughs> like in the in the in a traditional running sense but people think with esports oh it's just video games oh it's not a job but it's like you have no idea how much how much time you, you have to put in like all these professionals you see today like faker and cutie pie and night blue and all these players they didn't just like oh i'm really good at games they spend 5 10 15 hours a day every day playing to get that good and that's how it was with me it sounds like silly and it sounds like maybe i'm bringing it up to be more than it is but it's kind of like an, it's an addiction to a point like a lot of people, you know, alcohol addiction and drug addiction. And I'm not saying it's as bad as those things, but it can be equally as damaging. I was working for a company called Game at the time and my girlfriend was living with me at the time. So we were like 16, 17 year old. So I was waking up every day at nine, going to work until half five, finishing, coming home and then playing from half five to like 12 at night. Because at the time I was in the top 10 European guild, which required that amount of dedication when you have to put that much time into something like that your real life suffers so it definitely has a um has an effect on you i used to be really thin really in shape i used to skate all the time and then i kind of changed all of that for this because this is what i wanted to do and i have no regrets about anything that happened because it's what i loved doing but it's 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 not as easy or as fun as people think is it's oh just playing video games it's if you want to be the best then you you put in a lot, a lot of work. And then, I mean, it's worth it when you get there. I mean, I'm not at the level I was, I wanted to be, but I'm happy I can say to people, I was a professional, I earned a living doing it for a, for a period of time. And that's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's exciting, but it gets boring fast, if that makes sense. When we were on TV, it was super exciting. And the next time we were on, it was a little less exciting. And then it just kind of dwindles down to, honestly, like a job. It's like a job, it's like traveling for a job. Yeah, it's kind of half and half. It gets boring quick, but it's great to begin with. There was a website, I don't know if you heard of it, called Game Battles. That's where everything was done. That's where all the clan matches were organized. And it's incredible to see how esports has changed in the past 10 to 15 years. Like I remember when I was in school, I wrote an article 
um, for like an English assignment but, uh, on the evolution of, of gaming and how I, I've predicted in about 10, 15, 20 years time it would be just as mainstream as football or rugby. I mean, it's not quite there yet, but it's getting there. Like I remember watching the, the World Championship of League, um, the first one, and it was like I say, it was like this tiny little place of sod old people, and now they're selling out Olympic stadiums full of people. Being an esports athlete is, is certainly achievable now. It's more achievable than it's ever been because there's so much more focus on it. But at the same time, because there's so much more focus, there's so many more people trying to do it. So it's becoming harder and harder to get recognized. And that's how I think a lot of it's changed. It's, it's a lot more diverse in that sense. You, you, there's a lot more talent, but you have to work a lot harder. And you already had to work pretty hard to get into it. So honestly, it's, it's, it's the equivalent of becoming like a pop star or in that field. There's so many people want to do it but it's just not that easy, which is good and bad because it kind of does separate the, the good players and the bad ones. You're gonna have a lot of kids, teenagers, young adults wasting a lot of their time trying to reach it and never quite reaching it, which sucks, but I guess that's life.